On today's video, I want to talk to you about the importance of sill pans under your doors and not just your windows. Now you've seen me from this job site before talk about the importance of a pan underneath your windows. This is Polywall's Aluma Flash Plus that we use for this window here. And this actually has a recessed window detail. That's why there's a step in this pan. But look at that corner right there. See how that wood is showing? This is not a flexible material. But the beauty of their system is we can use that blue liquid flashing right there. That's called Blue Barrier Joint and Seam 2200. That's a fluid applied flashing that we'll be able to cover over that corner right there. So it's going to look just like the top. But what is happening on this pan for the window is any water that gets past the window is going to hit that pan and run to the outside. We need to do the same thing for our exterior doors. Here's a door right here that has a pan. And here's actually a pan we're going to use in another part of the house. If you look at this door right here, see this metal that's upturned right here on the back side? That's this right here. You're seeing the back of the pan. The door is actually sitting inside the pan. And then this upturned leg, this comes up about three quarters of an inch or maybe five eighths of an inch. It also runs onto the sides as well. The door is actually sitting in this pan. This is a, a piece of 24 gauge stainless steel. I like to use stainless whenever we're in contact with uh, concrete. But now, if that door leaks, it's going to leak onto the metal and go to the outside and not run to the inside. This would be even more important if we were in a wood framed house. I've seen so many rot and mold areas underneath of exterior doors where rain got through that door jam over just a few short years and started leaking in. So these pans are going to prevent that. One other thing I want to mention while we're on the inside here is when we're all done with the house, we want to make sure we caulk this joint between the the sill of the door or the, the bottom of the door and this pan because air can leak through there. But let's go to the outside. Let me actually show you a couple details on that pan while we're installed. So if you look at this pan, a couple things you want to notice. When the door actually got set, you're going to see that there's no sealant underneath here on this door. What we're doing is wherever we use some adhesive or some sealant to hold that door to the pan, we're going to run that about every six or eight inches in perpendicular to the pan. We never want to run it horizontally. That way water that filters down in there is going to have a chance to get out. You can see that pan has a bottom leg right here, which is running over the foundation, or this might be running over the wood frame. You'll also know that we've shingled that correctly. Below here is the water barrier that we've run up, and then we put the pan on. You always want to start low and work your way up. That's the first rule of shingling. The next thing you'll notice is this blue barrier. This is that fluid flashing or liquid flashing we've got here. This is covering over all those joints, but that metal is actually coming to here on the outside. It has a wing, so to speak, and then it's coming up another inch or two on the side of the house right here. And then this door happens to have a nailing flange on the outside. This is uh, from a window manufacturer. So we're able to use that fluid flashing on the door. And this little gap you're seeing right here, this is also a recessed door, just like a window. So the stuck is actually going to recess back in here. Got kind of a nice detail on that. And then last thing to note here, as we look at this window that's been installed, you can see here this window has that similar detail where we've used that fluid flashing to cover over this corner, get all those details right. Boy, this really makes it easy. Now, where can you find these metal pans? A couple places. You might talk to your roofer. They can come out and measure and custom make them for you. Here in Austin, I actually have a sheet metal company. That's all they do. You might try and find that resource in your town. Or lastly, you could buy a metal brake and do them yourself. They're not that hard to do, but you really want a sheet metal pan underneath all of your exterior doors. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you next time.